Hello and welcome to the Telegraph Studios. I'm Rachel Downey and today we're going to discuss how to safeguard your business from the national grid. I'm going to be joined by Leo Craig from Riello. Leo, what has been the most important news about energy in the past few months? The most important news is really about the lack of energy we've got. Um, three years ago, the national grid had 17% spare capacity um, to feed the UK. Um, last, last winter, we had 5% spare capacity in the, uh, for the energy. Um, this year, we're down to 4% spare capacity. So we can see a growing trend where we have a declining um, energy reserve within the UK. So this would mean more power cuts across the UK? What would really happen? Basically, if we start running out of power, Ofgem have a plan in place. Now, most people actually believe that um, um, they'd expect to go home and have power cuts in the evening. Actually, that's the last thing that will happen. Domestic supplies are pretty, mu pretty much safe. Ofgem will actually cut the power to industry and businesses first before they cut the power to domestic users. So businesses need to think carefully about their um, um, power protection plans. Well, you mentioned there, businesses in the firing line, they'll go first. Yeah. So what industries do you think will be affected first? Um, it, it's basically all industries. The obvious one is online online um, uh, retailers, etc. They, um, If they haven't got new power, they have problems. I mean, for example, you and I both shop online. Mm. If we go online and the website's not there, we don't think anything of it. We've got an error code, we just move to another supplier to where we can make our purchases. Simple as that. The CEO of that online company has got a, wor a worst nightmare because he comes in in the morning, he sees his website not up. So he then goes to his IT department. His IT department say, actually, we've had a power failure. We've checked with the suppliers. The power's going to be restored, but all the servers are down. And I, we don't know how long it's going to take us to get those servers back up. It could be 24 hours. The CEO actually um, realizes that he's lost a sale, he's losing revenue, potentially lost a customer, and he's losing reputation. And that's bad news for the CEO because um, he's going to have to explain that to the board or his shareholders. And it could be a devastating effect for the business losing 24 hours trading. But it's not just restricted to them because we're a very um, internet reliant society now. And that goes right through from um, banking institutions, financial sectors, um, right through to the NHS, to the emergency services, etc. They're all reliant on uh, the internet and data centres that are, support, are supporting that internet. So basically, we're all at risk. Well, we're all at risk then, so we all need to start doing something. Which activity that we do at work, we use at work, will use the most energy? Um, well, if we look at just at data centres themselves, they actually draw 8% of the UK energy demand, and which is a huge mm. amount. But when you compare that to the amount of revenue, say for online stores, it's said that uh, there's going to be £221 billion pounds worth of revenue from online um, sales by 2016, which is a huge amount. So you can actually see why they're drawing so much energy. Huge amount of money that could be lost. Yes. Are you saying then that businesses will suffer the consequences? No. Businesses um, won't suffer the consequences if they've got the right solutions in place and they've got the protection in place. With the right protection, I mean they have an uninterruptible power supplies or standby generation so that if there is the power cut, they can actually continue operating, continue, uh, continue their services. Whether it's online stores, they can continue selling. If it's the NHS, they can continue moving patients' records, continue with operations, etc. And the emergency services can continue answering 999 calls. Okay. Uh, let's do a thought experiment. If I was going to contact you today, what happens from tomorrow? Can I have a step-by-step -step description from the briefing to the implementation? Right. Uh, the most important thing is, uh, is the briefing um, when we go in with the client and find out what their needs are. So we're actually looking at how critical their business is um, and what is the risk and how much would they lose if they had a power failure. Um, it's different for different businesses. If it's a small shop, the losses might not be too bad if it's only lost a power for 10 minutes. But if it's a national bank and they lose uh, power for 10 minutes, the losses could be quite horrendous in the stock markets. 
Um, so once we understand the criticality of the business and that, then we're able to start put together a solution. And then from that point forward, it's just a matter of implementing that solution. So perfect planning, making the changeover as smooth as possible uh, for the business, and then making sure that, that equipment is maintained for the future. We understand, therefore, that you know it's a risk. That's why we have to uh, implement a solution. But what is the disruption for everyday businesses? There shouldn't be any disruption when we're implementing the um, in, in implementing the UPS system and that. Um, and actually, if there is interruption, that's not really um, the the problem for the client and that because the, what they're protecting against is interruptions that they're not expecting and that can be the one that's really damaging to the business. So they're putting a system in that's planned, um, the planned interruption, but they're protecting against um, interruptions that's going to be the unexpected uh, uh, problem, and that's the one that's going to cost them a lot of money. You mentioned again, Leo, the interruption. So what happens, for instance, if there's a power cut? What happens to the backup to the backup? Well, that's a really good question, actually, because an electrical power supply is, uh, is an electronic device. And like any electronic device, whether it be a TV, microwave, fridge, freezer and that, it can, it will fail at some point in its future. So it's important for clients to realise that and to take action on that. So we put redundant systems in, so if one fails, the other one will carry on. So that gives them the extra protection, so they're not only protected against power, power failures, but they're also protected against equipment failures, and also it enables them to maintain the equipment without um, any downtime. Does it and how does it comply with the carbon emission regulations? Well, all businesses are going to have to start complying with ca uh, carbon emission regulations and targets set by UK and European governments. Um, the UPS itself needs to be as efficient as possible. It's like when you're going out to buy a washing machine, we look for the A double star rated uh, washing machines to reduce energy costs and that and then we need to do the same in data centers but there's more they can do now um, there's the introduction of lithium-ion batteries which are much much smaller and store a lot more power so the end the data centers themselves can use this technology to store more power within the data center which they can use at times of peak demand um, on the national grid, working with the national grid. It's basically called smart grid technology and data centres really need to start embracing this because the worst thing is that they're going to see more and more power cuts, so if they can help the national grid, it helps them. Um, businesses, industries, they only need to implement things that are a success, so how can we measure the success of this? Well, I mean, if we're measuring the efficiency, there's various metrics within the uh, data centre environment, which is the power usage effectiveness, and that's easily measured within the data centre. But the most critical one, or apart from the efficiency, is the resilience, and actually that's the amount of downtime that's actually um, experienced by the data centre. Data centres are looking for zero downtime. If they can get to 99.9999% um, uptime, that's a good a metric and a good target to get to, get to for them. It all seems like we should implement things quite quickly, so where do you see the energy crisis in say five to ten years? The energy crisis is not going to get um, any better, uh, it's going to get worse basically. Um, there's been f 15 power stations shut down since 2012 on the uh, national grid, uh, which is the problems we're seeing now. Um, the only new energy that's been coming online is basically renewable, so it's wind, we, uh, um, solar and, and wind power, and basically that's great for sun shining and the wind's blowing. Um, in the future, there's Hinkley Point that looks like it's going to go ahead, but that's 10 years from now. So we've now got 10 years of dwindling uh, energy reserves, and that's going to affect business big time. It's going to be, it could be a nightmare scenario. Well, you know what, Leo, thank you for bringing this to our attention, and thank you for joining us here today at the Telegraph Studios. Thank you very much. Thank you.